This week on the Computer Chronicles, a visit to the Macworld Expo in Boston. We'll show you the new super-fast Power Macs and the latest Mac clones. You'll see why NetHeads are turning to the Macintosh as the platform of choice for designing websites. And it wouldn't be a Mac world without cool new games. All this and more coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults. And by Upside, the business magazine for the technology elite. This year's Macworld Expo has the usual displays of faster hardware, spiffy software, thousands of adoring Macintosh fans, but the big issue at this Macworld is not the hardware or the software, but the company itself. And the question everyone is asking is how will Apple recover from what has unquestionably been a terrible year? We're transitioning from a dialogue that has been, that has centered on survival to a dialogue that's going to center on excitement. And it feels really good to do that. We've been busy these last six months. Uh, and I'm sure that, that you've noticed that. We, we built a management team. We uh, got a strategic direction uh, articulated and begun uh, implementing it. Uh, we've, uh, we went out and we raised some money. Uh, and no one asks me yet uh, anymore whether we have enough cash to get by. Uh, with about $1.4 billion in the bank, I think we can eke through. More than 50,000 people attended this year's Macworld Expo in Boston, and they believe that Apple will in fact do more than just eke through. Like at my job at MIT, people are asking me, I heard Apple's going out of business, I heard that the Mac's not going to be here anymore, should we still be buying Macintosh? And I'm saying, and I have to pay spin control for like Apple at MIT to say, it's really not what Wall Street Journal said or what Business Week said. This is how it really is. Apple's bigger than McDonald's. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> so I really think it comes down to a sense of humor. I think we Mac types have to have a very strong sense of humor, and the PC types have no sense of humor. And I think it's, I don't know, that's how I, it breaks down for me. People who are, you know, you have to, if you, if you work in a Mac system, there are, you know, we're already the, the David, but I think, we, you know, we will overcome the Goliath at some point. <laughs> Most of the innovation seems to be on the Apple side. I have people uh, tell me at work, well, what about this application? And I'm like, it was developed on the Mac first. And it says, well, what about this? We had that six years ago. Uh, one of the sayings we had when Windows 95 came out was a t-shirt that said, Windows 95 is like Mac 84. So no surprise, the Mac fans are still die-hard Mac fans. But it wasn't just the Mac users who were upbeat at this Macworld Expo. Most of the analysts and most of the journalists were also bullish on Apple's future, despite the problems of the past two years. Again, for some reason, the last two years, they got their eye off innovation in just competing with Microsoft. What they've got to do is come back and become innovative. So if they can be um, responsible, accountable, and innovative again, I think that more than likely they have a chance to really turn this thing around. We had some, I think, stagnation on the Mac side. The last couple years, there hasn't been that much innovation. There hasn't been that much exciting and new. There hasn't been breakthrough software and hardware. And with uh, the, the uh, advent of all these great web creation, content creation tools, and uh, all these breakthroughs in video in and out pricing, all of a sudden, the Mac platform's revitalized. I mean, there's a lot of reason now uh, to choose Macintosh over Windows or Win95. There was another interesting perspective here on the health of Apple and the Macintosh. Mac Temps is an employment and temp agency that specializes in the placement of employees who know how to use Macs. According to John Schwang of Mac Temps, the Mac is alive and well, and his business is growing. People have been talking about the demise of Apple for the longest time, but it's never really happened. See, because what's really important in our business is not necessarily the amount of new users that Apple gets as much as their installed base. And as we know, that's still 25 million really fiercely loyal uh, customers, and that's really what's propelled our growth. So though Apple has had trouble last year, uh, this year, for instance, we've grown our Macintosh business 26%, so we're doing very well. On the publishing side, there was also evidence of strong continued support for Apple. In fact, one company announced a brand new Mac magazine. Imagine Publishing used the Macworld Expo to launch Mac Addict. The publisher is Cheryl England. A lot of people told us we were really crazy for starting this magazine. A lot of people said, well, you know, good luck. 
And there's a lot of people out there saying, oh, the Mac is dead. Are you crazy? Face up to reality. Apple is dead. Um, we certainly don't think so. Mac Addict magazine doesn't pretend to be objective about Apple and the Macintosh. As the name of their publication suggests, they are out and out Mac boosters. A couple of things that make the magazine really different. One, we're going to have definitely an attitude. We love the Mac and we're not afraid to say we love the Mac and we think PCs and Windows suck. Um, if that offends you, this is not your magazine. Indeed, there was a lot to celebrate at this year's Boston Macworld Expo. Apple used the occasion to celebrate the production of the 25 millionth Macintosh computer. With Intel's Pentium coming out at faster and faster clock speeds, the hardware issue here at Macworld was clearly one of speed, as Apple and several of the new clone companies are coming out with faster power PCs and new multiprocessor models. The Performa 6400, which is Apple's new Tower Mac, is really a step in the right direction. You look at a product that's well-focused, sexy, fun, fast, a good value, that's a really neat product. The Performer 6400 is Apple's first mini tower designed specifically for the home. It's based on the new PowerPC chips that run at 180 to 200 megahertz. The new Performa 6400 comes standard with 16 megs of RAM, a 1.6 gigabyte hard drive, an 8x CD-ROM drive, and 3D surround sound. The price on the new Performa 6400 starts at around $2,400. One of the applications that really eats up this faster processing power is digital video. And Apple showed off a new easy-to-use video editing system called Avid Cinema that takes advantage of the performer's new speed and power. Avid Cinema uses a simple interface to lead you through the video editing process, allowing almost anyone to become a skillful video producer. You can rearrange shots simply by dragging and dropping them in the project timeline, Avid Cinema offers 25 digital transition effects in addition to standard fades and dissolves. Your finished movie can be output to videotape or saved in a QuickTime format for digital distribution on the internet or for use in a computer presentation. Avid Cinema was a big hit with the journalists here at Macworld. Breakthroughs in digital video, this new thing from Avid that Apple's bundling, it's a complete video system for like $500 for the home user. It's everything you need. You plug your camcorder in, you dump the video, you edit it, you change it around, you play with it, you add some music, you dump it back out to tape, all for 500 bucks. It's the holy grail. Not only was Apple showing faster Macs at this show, they also introduced the first multi-processor Macintosh here at Macworld. The Power Macintosh 9500 180MP features two 180 megahertz PowerPC 604E chips. The Power Mac 9500 can run all applications written for 68,000 based Macs, and it can also run Mac apps that have been accelerated to take advantage of the PowerPC. Though Apple did introduce several new Macintosh computers at this Macworld Expo, the company says its focus in the future will be on streamlining its product line. In the, uh, in the hardware side, uh, we've, got a, we've got a few things we, we want to focus on. Uh, first and foremost is we want fewer core products. Uh, what you're going to see over time is that we're going to simplify the product line. I might actually be able to remember what all the models mean. <laughs> Industry analyst Tim Baharin says he thinks the new Apple CEO is on the right track. One of the things that Apple did was confuse the market with having so many versions of the Mac out there. Uh, now they're going to take each of the lines, the Performa, the 8500, the 9500, etc. Instead of having five to seven models in each, they'll probably pare it down to three models. What they're going to do is make it much simpler for the customer to say, all right, if I'm going to go for a Performa, I only have these three that I have to worry about figuring out what I want to buy. While Apple is cutting back on the number of Macintosh models it will offer, there are more Mac systems to buy than ever before thanks to the new Mac clones being offered by companies like Power Computing, Daystar, and Umax. I'm really hot for Mac clones. I think it's good for the Mac OS. I think it's good for the business. I think it's good for the Mac community to have choices. Choices are good, so I'm really up. I think the Power Towers are great. I think the Umax uh, 
dual processor equipment is cool. I think the Daystar multiprocessor is cool. I think the fact that we're going to have IBM and Motorola coming on the scene soon is really cool. Power computing showed Macworld attendees that they could not only turn out Power Mac compatibles, but they could also rival Apple in spectacular PR. This was a bungee jumping apparatus just outside the Boston World Trade Center, set up for use by attendees and sponsored by the power computing company. The bungee jumping was the lure to get attendees to find out more about the new 225 megahertz Mac clone called the Power Tower Pro 225. Power Computing says it is the fastest personal computer in the world. It's aimed at high performance users, obviously, such as graphic artists and programmers. The prices will start at around $5,000. Daystar Digital is the first company to ship a multi-processor Mac with a special multiple CPU Mac operating system. Daystar's Genesis MP comes with two or four PowerPC chips. Prices range from around $5,500 to around $10,000. Motorola showed off their first PowerPC consumer product here. Though there was no definite shipping date and no information on availability, Motorola demonstrated a prototype of its PowerStack mini tower it features a 100 megahertz PowerPC 604 processor, and it will support both AIX and the Windows NT operating system. There were still more new Mac clones. UMAX introduced several mid-range PowerPC 603E systems with microprocessors ranging from 140 to 200 megahertz. UMAX is targeting the middle portion of the market that falls between the first-time home computer buyer and the high-end video or graphics professional. If you're really a multimedia maven and looking for maximum multitasking power, you probably would have ended up at the booth showing off the latest version of the B-Box. B Incorporated was founded just over five years ago by former Apple executive Jean-Louis Gasset. His mission was to overcome the limitations of existing computer architectures. The B-Box features a custom CPU and a proprietary operating system designed specifically to take advantage of multiple CPUs. The company introduced the B-Box Dual 603 here at Macworld. Prices for the 133 megahertz models start a little higher than for the basic version at around $3,000. But despite its relatively modest price, Jean-Louis Gasset says the B-Box is not for everyone. But it's not, let's, let's uh, sweep this aside, it's not an office automation uh, type of machine. You know, these, these are legacy applications which are better served uh, by existing OSs. But now we have emerging applications in the digital media world, um, digital audio, image processing, digital video. Um, you also have uh, internet uh, you know, services like audio or video servers over, over the internet, and also game, uh, games programming. Games programming, uh, you, know, you, have, you had primitive, fairly primitive tools, and uh, now with a, with a very fast machine, you can produce and, and generate games much, uh, much faster for all other game platforms. B is trying to leverage the technology developed for its own multitasking operating system by making it available for other multiprocessor Mac compatibles. This is the B operating system running another PowerPC-based Mac clone. Using the B OS, you can do effective multitasking even on a single processor model. B is trying to avoid the old Apple mistake by focusing on its software as well as its hardware. And the interesting thing is when you, once you remove the hardware variable and you compare the, the speed at which uh, our software runs and someone else's software runs, well then, uh, then, uh, then it starts uh, people thinking about uh, you know, how powerful uh, our software is. The BOS Release 8 supports 3D graphics, offers its own web browser, and includes object classes for new user interfaces. Next up, the Macintosh stakes its claim as the premier web development tool. A Macworld Expo is usually dominated by new graphics applications, cool new multimedia tools, but not even Macworld has been able to escape the onrushing train called the Internet. For here at this expo, the Mac's design capabilities are being used to position it as the ideal platform for creating websites. Well, first of all, if you're involved in creating anything for the web, I think um, you'd be hard-pressed to say a Windows machine is a better choice. I, I think it's faster and easier to create content for the web on a Mac, um, hands down. We have better tools, they work better, they work better together. 
It's amazing though. I was here last year and it, the web domination wasn't as obvious. This year it's, it's just so much about the web that I think it's really, I think it'll save, well, it won't save the Mac, but I think it's a, a great thing to have happened. Indeed, there were lots of old and new software companies showing off new web design tools from Claris and Quarterdeck to Terry Morse Software and Digital Comet. Claris introduced Homepage, a web page authoring tool with a WYSIWYG interface. Homepage automatically creates all the HTML code for you, automating the time-consuming task of web page development. But if you're an experienced web author, you can have instant access to the underlying code for editing and adding advanced features. Homepage is available for both the Mac and Windows 95. Delta Point previewed a new version of their Mac web development system called QuickSight. New features include automatic HTML code generation and automatic page link creation. QuickSight allows you to make global, sectional, or single page modifications with just one click. And several small companies came together to form a developer's greenhouse for web applications. Among them was Digital Comet, which demonstrated Comet Page, a semi-automated web authoring tool. The software lets you drag and drop commands, forms, and macros into the web page editor, and then lets you serve the pages locally for testing. Comet Page is targeted at the more sophisticated web designer. I'm targeting professional web authors who are designing sites with large numbers of pages that need the kinds of features that I have available. Uh, the ability to expand what I were calling macros, expanding on the fly, headers and footers, uh, things that are used on the pages over and over again. Also want to make their pages dynamic. You want to change the page based on the IP address of the person coming through. Or have got some large corporate sites that are interested in that because uh, they want their boss to see the that have the page look different for their boss than they do for anybody else coming in. So the boss sees six more links and counters to various pages that nobody else can see. Uh, or if you want to make your page random, you want it to look different when it's, as it comes in. You want to see a different picture every single time, you can use my kind of features. Another small company, Terry Morse Software, was offering an interesting new web publishing tool called Myrmidon. This program acts like a printer language and converts existing documents directly into web pages. Unlike other similar tools on the market, Myrmidon lets you preserve the formatting and style of your original document by having you describe the format, that is, tell it whether your document is a table or a list, for example. And Myrmidon then figures out how to convert your document to HTML via a chooser extension. Myrmidon is a bargain at only around $50. Quarterdeck demonstrated a new version of its WebStar product, the most popular Mac web server software. With WebStar, any Mac file can become a URL on the web, including GIF and JPEG images, as well as QuickTime movies. Version 1.3 now features a plug-in architecture, running extensions as routines built into the server. Version 2.0 will ship later this year. A company called Spider Island Software showed off an upgrade to its Telefinder internet and BBS server software. Telefinder has built-in support for server parsed HTML or SPML, allowing you to create web pages that adjust content based on the client's browser, computer platform, or other factors. With SPML, Telefinder can also perform specific customer page tallies, allowing you to know exactly how many visitors you have to your website. And Telefinder's caching increases server performance by serving files directly from memory as pages or images to the browser. The software costs about $700. In addition to new Internet server software and web authoring tools, there were new browsers and Internet front ends on display at Macworld. Microsoft showed off the latest version of Internet Explorer for the Macintosh. The new version supports multimedia web pages, allows you to view 3D sites based on VRML and QuickDraw 3D. The new version of Explorer has one very nice new feature. On websites with large graphics to download, it displays the text first so you can start to browse the site while waiting for the graphics. America Online announced the beta version of its new client software for the Macintosh, AOL version 3.1 features a new look and feel to its menus, and it automatically lets you know when other AOL members who are on your mailing list are also online, just in case you want to get into a live chat with them. The new version of AOL also provides one-click internet access. At the Macworld Developers Greenhouse, Pointcast drew attention with its impressive customized news service and smart screensaver. 
The PointCast network has been available for PC users since spring. It launches for the Mac this fall. PointCast downloads news, sports scores, stock market data, and weather updates automatically via an internet connection. You can easily hotlink to a related website from any story on the PointCast network if you want to get more information. The Macintosh has always been a powerful multimedia machine, and several companies were taking advantage of that to show off new software that lets you do video streaming on the net. Vivo Software introduced Vivo Active, which lets you do video on demand on the web. Vivo Active creates highly compressed audio video files that are HTTP and HTML compatible. You can download the Vivo Active Internet Player for free from Vivo's website. No word yet on the price for the producer software. Apple put on a private press demonstration of its new QuickTime video conferencing software. This is version 1.5. There. Now, is that what you're going to be marking up in the light blue color, John? Got it. You can see I've just drawn an arrow. With the new software, you can share application-based data via Farallon's Timbuktu Pro on an object-based whiteboard. QuickTime conferencing can be done over the Internet, so you can also check out relevant websites during your video conference. The ghost of Steve Jobs haunts any Macworld Expo, but perhaps more at this show than ever before. Because two of the hot topics here, the Internet and objects, are the two current passions of the former Apple chairman. In fact, what they're talking about here is the use of the Internet and live objects as a radically new way to distribute software to the Macintosh desktop. For years, they've had to take suites, application suites. I used to make them. And they would always say, but I don't want this piece, and I don't want this piece. Don't make me pay you for it. Don't make me store it. Live objects make it possible for them to take, if they want a spreadsheet, a word processor, and a dental package. They put them all together, and then that works for them. That's the precise solution that makes money for them. Uh, the other thing that Live Objects does for us is it allows us to make our components, the powerful piece that people use, really small. The ability to grab live objects off the net is based on Apple's OpenDoc technology. OpenDoc is a component platform which allows applications to work across different operating systems, including the Mac OS, Windows, OS 2, and several Unix flavors. In fact, 16 new live object products were introduced at Macworld. Word processors topped the list, but there were also more specialized products, such as Wave from Digital Harbor. Wave calls itself a work processor. It allows you to create documents with a typical word processor tool, but it lets you do a lot more. For example, with Wave, you can also bring in sound clips and text or graphics directly from a website. The secret is an integrated web browser and Apple's new technology called CyberDog. CyberDog is really fun because it's a completely integrated way to use the internet. So instead of doing one kind of software for doing downloads, another software for doing news groups, another software for doing your normal browsing, this all puts it directly in the operating system. In fact, what it means is that a web page can be a file on your desktop just next to a WordPerfect file or an Excel spreadsheet. And you put it in your folders, you can organize it however you want to, and the internet is just sort of completely embedded in your system. The whole object and internet mentality is changing the way even Apple is thinking about releasing its own software, particularly the Mac OS version 8.0. Rather than wait to ship the complete finished product, Apple has decided to make available separate components of the new Mac OS as they are finished. Some Mac OS components will be offered free on the net. Bigger and more complex elements of the OS will be sold on discs or CD-ROMs. Coming up next, a look at the latest games with the Macintosh. Walking around at Macworld Expo is always a lot of fun because, you know, anytime you see Macintosh software, you're going to see innovative new creativity tools, hot new multimedia applications, but above all, cool new games. A small company called Antenna Head Industries is releasing a new action game called Sanctity. In this game, you're a special commando being dropped onto an island to discover what's there and then neutralize any potential threats. There are more than 60 vehicles awaiting you on the island, all heavily armed by the natives in their final attempt to defend themselves against something. Your mission is to discover exactly what that something is. 
There are quite a few other interesting new games or new versions of games released here at Macworld. Many of the games are kind of on the dark side, including the 3D game Dark Vengeance, which is a combination combat, fantasy, and adventure game. There are hands-on struggles, duels, and magic rites. You can play alone or network with up to 32 players. Sure. The single-player version from Reality Bites costs about 50 bucks. It's another $20 for the network version. This is Stitch Painter from Coconeal Design Studio. It's a grid-oriented paint program for knitting, weaving, and other forms of stitchery. It allows you to import graphic designs, decide how big you want them to be, and then it gives you the stitch coordinates to produce the desired pattern. If you'd like to learn the ancient art of origami, Cassidy and Green is releasing a high-tech tutor to teach you the fine art of paper folding. The software is called Origami, the Secret Life of Paper. It features hundreds of color photographs and full motion videos to explain the complex origami techniques. The CD also includes the history of origami and related stories. For the serious artist, Fractal Design released a new 3D paint program called Detailer. You can paint highlights and texture onto 3D models without bouncing back and forth between image editing and 3D rendering applications. Cassidy and Green brought out a new spreadsheet program that is driven by graphics, not numbers. The new program is called the Let's Keep It Simple Spreadsheet, or Let's Kiss for short. You create calculations by dragging objects from a palette of icons onto the workspace. Then you connect as many objects as you like, and the spreadsheet automatically performs the appropriate calculations. If you enjoyed playing with Legos as a kid, or if you still do, there's now a very cool new Lego-type game for the Mac called Bricks. There are more than 200 different brick styles to choose from in 12 bright colors. The CD-ROM comes with both a kid's version of the game as well as a more complicated version for older kids or adults. This is the new Kai's Power Goo from MetaTools. Now, you may think Kai tools are hard to use, but MetaTools tried to overcome that assumption by having Power Goo demonstrated by a 14-year-old. Power Goo lets you manipulate images in real time and essentially make animated movies. With Power Goo, you can smear, smudge, or fuse one image with another almost instantly. And you can do all of this on a typical desktop Mac or PC. That's our look at Boston's Macworld Expo for the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults. And by Upside, the business magazine for the technology elite. Videotape copies of all Computer Chronicle shows are available for $32.50. Please order by show number and topic. And for more detailed information about the series, guests, and products featured, you can also order a subscription to the Chaffee Letter. In each issue, Stuart provides his unique insights and thoughts about the fast-changing world of personal technology. Videotapes and the Chaffee Letter can be ordered by calling 1-800-800-9520 or by writing us at the Computer Chronicles. For more information on anything you've seen on today's program, check out our website at www.pctv.com.